I'm going to show you how to build and create a sprite in Sprite Factory. So the first thing you want to do is to open the Sprite Factory editor. And so here we see our list of sprite groups and our master sprites. We already have some here, but I'm just going to create a new one. So the first thing you'd want to do is to choose whether or not you want your sprite to be in a group or not. Uh, I'm not going to put this sprite in a group. You could put the sprite in a group if you wanted it to share atlases so that you could save draw calls if you're, if you're uh, making a sprite that might be part of a background set you might want to put it into a group but this this is just going to be a character so I'm going to give him uh, his own atlases he'll just be in it he'll be a sprite not within a group so we'll select the sprite group called none and click this plus here on the master sprites box that will add a new master sprite so now I have a master sprite called sprite 42 so first thing I'm going to do is change its name name I'm going to call it guy and this guy will be an animated sprite, so we don't need to worry about his static sprite. And he's in no group. That's correct. We're not going to add any colliders or material sets or locators for this sprite. We're just going to create a basic sprite with a few animations. So this box here is the animations box. And to add an animation, you click this plus here. So we've got a new animation called animation 0. With this D next to it means it's the default animation. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename this animation. Here's the animation properties area. We'll rename this one stand. And now we need to add some frames. So here is the frames box. This will show you what frames you have in the currently selected animation. So I could add a frame just by clicking this plus, but there's an easier way to add frames all at the same time. So you need to find your source images. So I'm going to go get some the Im source images for this sprite and let's add these stand frames so here's 15 frames they're named sequentially so they'll come in in the correct order when I drag these from the project onto this drag and drop texture files to add frames area let go and they'll all appear they're all in order 0 through 14 so now we see up here this preview of the animation. You see the guy kind of moving a little bit in his stand pose. You see how he stops at the end of his at the end of his animation. We want this to loop. So we can change the animation wrap mode right here from once to loop. And now you can see the guy is looping properly. Um, okay, so let's add another animation here. Let's add another animation and call this one walk. Let's get the walk frames, drag them in. Okay, so we need to loop it. So I can see there's a there seems to be an extra frame in there during his walk. See how he kind of stops at the end of his walk cycle. So frame zero looks like this. Frame 16 looks exactly the same, but we have a redundant frame there. So let's just click frame 16 and press delete, confirm it, and now we can see the walk is more smooth. We've gotten rid of the extra frame. So I want to make this walk, maybe I want to make it a little bit faster. I'm going to change the frame rate of the walk. So right now it's at 15 frames per second. Let's change it to 20. So now he walks a little bit faster. That's good. So let's go ahead and add another animation. We'll call it punch. And get our punch frames. Drop them in. And so we see he's punching. It's fine to be on wrap mode once. I think the punch should be a little bit faster, so I'm going to make it 20 frames per second also. You can see the last frame of the punch, his arm is still out there. Instead of going back to the frame 0, it, it ends before it reaches there. That, that's probably fine because after he punches, it'll he will play his default animation, which is stand, and his arms will be pretty much in the right place. But if you want to make add that extra frame at the end of the punch it, you can do it easily by selecting this punch 1000 zero, zero, zero frame and pressing duplicate and so now we have two copies of the first frame and I can just move that down by clicking the down button so now you see he punches and at the end of his punch his arm goes back into the right position now let's do another thing let's go to the to the point where his arm is all the way out at the the uh, 
most extended point of the punch and let's make that frame hold for a few frames so make it lo last longer so I'm gonna go right here under frame hold I'm gonna change that to three so now when he punches that frame will be displayed for three frames at 20 frames per second so a total of 0.15 seconds this frame will be displayed so it lasts a little longer it looks a little better if if you needed to do any kind of realignment of the sprite you could do it in here in the frame editor if some of your frames were not coming in aligned to each other like say the walk was not aligned with the stand correctly or, or the punch you could easily move the the sprite around like this in in the frame editor or you could use the numbers up here to for more accuracy uh, you can also use the light box here to show you a frame of another animation like I'm just gonna look at the sixth frame of the walk animation let's go to a one that's more obvious go to the first frame of the walk and you can see behind him there's that ghosted image of of the walk animation you can use that for alignment but all my all my uh, frames are aligned because of the way I built them they're not you don't need to do any I didn't I didn't need to do any adjusting but you certainly could do do that if your frames are not all the same size or they're not aligned properly just adjust them frame by frame or if you need to adjust all the frames at once in a particular animation you can use this offset all frames here which would allow you to move this character and now you see how he's been offset on all of his frames in that in that animation let's just move him back to where he roughly it's a little bit off but it doesn't matter for my purposes so then we're done creating this sprite he's got three animations let's go ahead and save him so now he's been saved and added to the list so now we have a master sprite called guy but we need to get that sprite into the scene so we can use him so we can create a prefab with him or use him in a game so the way you do that is to select your master sprite here and click this button that says create sprite in scene so that will create a sprite in the scene you can see it shows up as guy let's close the editor here so now he's in the scene he starts out at 000 but he he's been created with the sprite component here and you can see all the properties on his component you can change some of these if needed but uh, you can create a prefab out of him if you would like to by doing it the normal way you would in unity and so now you have a sprite if I press play you can see he's playing his his default animation which is the stand animation and the only other step necessary would be if you're going to use this sprite as a character you would want to have some script that has the character logic in it you want to create your own script that would you would add as a component on this sprite and be able to control him or whatever and I do have uh, a script I created um, before so let me see if I can find it here this is just a super simple script that allows you to move it with move the character with the keyboard and I'll press play and now he walks his speed's a little slow. Let's change my speed there. Now he can walk. And he can punch. So that's as e that's how easy it is to to build a sprite and create it in Sprite Factory.